Can Necrodominance bring back Black Burn in Modern thanks to its turn 3 combo kill potential? Let's find out. So here is our Necro Black Bird deck for Modern, and this deck is hilarious. You might remember a couple years ago on Budget Magic, we played this Black Burn deck, and it was really, really sweet. This deck draws some inspiration from that deck, but it gets this exciting new combo kill with Necro Dominance. So let's talk about this deck, what it's trying to do, jump into some leagues and see it in action. So let's start with kind of the traditional Black Burn stuff. If you saw the Budget Magic forever ago, you might know some of these cards. Orcish Bowmasters, eh, it was in budget magic but it's a burn spell technically thanks to its etb and it's kind of busted sleeper agent hilariously janky one mana three three but we got to give it to our opponent when it enters the battlefield but then on their upkeep they take two damage so this is going to deal a bunch of damage to us but also a bunch of damage to our opponent over the course of a game it's probably a one mana like deal six burn spell or something which is actually ridiculous plus a lot of our black burn gains life so we can afford to take some damage off sleeper agent as long as it's hitting our opponent then we have one of my favorite jank plans of the deck, which is Rakdos Charm. Rakdos Charm, it's got a bunch of modes. It can be Graveyard Hate, can blow up an artifact, but the big deal is each creature deals a damage to its controller. So we have Sleeper Agent, which we give to our opponent. We have Forbidden Orchard that when we tap it, we give our opponent a 1-1, one, one, plus our opponent's probably playing creatures. So let me just Rakdos Charm and get like eight damage for two mana or something ridiculous. We also have Bump in the Night Lightning Bolt, just three damage for a single mana. Lightning Bolt, the one mana red card in our main deck, but it's just too good to pass up if we got red mana. Then we have our life gain burn. Okaiba Raid Reckoner over the course of a couple turns is essentially we gain two, our opponent loses two, and we get a 2 2. Gonti's Mechanicians, kind of like a Lightning Helix, but it can only hit our opponent's face. It does take a couple turns, but it's only one mana. Chancellor of the Draws, we can reveal in our opening hand a Lightning Helix, our opponent's face. They take three, we gain three. So this is all kind of the traditional Black Burn stuff. But then we have the big new addition to the deck in Necro Dominance. And I am here to tell you that Necro Dominance is literally literally the perfect card for Blackbird for a whole bunch of reasons. So if you don't know our new Necro, three mana triple black enchantment. We gotta skip our draw step. At the beginning of our end step, we can pay any amount of life. If we do, we draw that many cards. The downsize is our max hand size reduced down to five, and we essentially lay line of the void ourselves. If a card goes into our graveyard, it goes to exile instead. So why is Necro so perfect for Blackbird? And there's really three reasons. So first, the obvious one, uh, it's really good played fairly. We just cast all of our burn spells once we run out of action we necro draw four or five cards the next turn cast some more burn spells kill our opponent so that use kind of the floor of necro is already really strong number two is our deck gains a bunch of life. One of the upsides of Blackbird, even though it might not be efficient, a lot of it has life gain tacked onto it, so it's not uncommon for us to be at 25 life, 28 life, as we cast our burn spells, and we can use that life to draw more with Necro. The third reason is the most important reason, though, and that is that Necro gives us this hilarious new turn three combo kill with Soul Spike. So this plan is a little bit risky, because we could whiff, but when it works, it is amazing. So Soul Spike is this seven mana four damage, also a drain spell. Our opponent takes four, we gain four, can hit creatures if we need to. So with seven mana four damage burn spell, the upside is we can cast it for free by exiling two cards from our hand, two black cards, rather than paying its mana cost. So the idea of this is we spend the first couple turns of the game getting in as much damage on our opponent as possible. Then on turn three, we slam Necro. We go to our end step. We spend all of our life except one to draw to Necro. And we hope that we hit two or three soul spikes. And then with all the cards that we drew, we just actually Exhale black card, soul spike you, soul spike you, soul spike you. Win the game on the spot with this huge combo burn end step kill. So that's the real goal of this deck. Get in enough damage on our opponent with our burn spells, hopefully with their fetches and shock lands and so forth. And then use Necro to draw a bunch of soul spikes and just kill you on turn three for the turn three blackbird combo kill. Mana beast outside of Forbidden Orchard, relatively normal stuff. In the sideboard, we get some life gain hate, some graveyard hate, pick your poison. I don't know why we always get the wrong version to pick your poison, but good to deal with the wandering and so forth. March Regis are all really good with Necro. We can draw a ton of cards, pitch them to March to kill something, gain a bunch of life. Alpine Moon to hate on Tron lands and Ugin's Labyrinth and so forth. Curse Totem for creature combo decks, Emrakul for mill. 
Emerkel for male, and that is Necro Blackbird for Bodard. That's our Against the Oz deck for today. So let's jump into some games and see just how ridiculous Necro Dominance can be. Can we get some turn three combo kills? How busted is this new enchantment? Let's find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. We've got new tokens and playmats, and you can even get the tokens signed if you want. Check them all out over at mtggoldfishmerch.com. It is time for some jank. We're playing, oh, we are mulliganing. We're playing some, some mostly black. There, there is lightning bolt, but we're playing some mono black necro burn in modern. And we will keep this. Gonti's mechanicians to the bottom. Well, here we go. We will reveal a chancellor of the dross. <laughs> Aha, opponent. How do you feel about three to the face? Unfortunately, our opponent revealed Kahira, which, means oh, they might be control and that might be a problem, but we do have the necro. And if we can get down the necro, who knows what could happen. Lush Portico for our opponent. So the idea of this deck, we burn, burn, burn. We necro our entire deck to hit a bunch of soul spikes and win at instant speed on our end step. <laughs> we'll see if it works. Ren in six. I feel like it's possible we win in one turn with Necro. Like the turn we play it, probably likely that we win on the second turn. Do we just play the theater? Eh, I think we gotta play, we gotta play the Raid Reckoner. Or Reckoner Raid. Ha ha, down to 16. <laughs> with our mighty Biker Saga. Kamigawa in the End Dynasty was such a cool set. Cyberpunk Biker Rats, bone it. Winslow Beef and Passin. We draw Bloodstained Mire. Well, that makes things much easier. Since we drew a Bloodstained Mire, now we kind of get the best of all worlds. We get to play the Bloodstained Mire. We can pass the turn. We can flash in our Bowmasters at some point. And then next turn, I think it's party time. I think it's party time with the Necro. Pwn it. Cracks the Windswept Teeth. We're at 25. That, where, that means we can draw. Oh, opponent's down to 12? <gasps> That's huge. And a Planner Genius. Top four cards, put a land from among them on the battlefield. Sure, 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 sure. Oh, this has got to be like a Omnath deck, right? It's got to be like a Evoke Elemental Omnath deck. They definitely could have counters. Savine's Reclamation on a land. Okay, sure. Gets back to Flooded Strand, doing a little ramping. Temple Garden tapped. I mean, I think we're going to end up going for it. Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Blood Crypt, untapped. Orcish Bowmasters, paying ya down to 10. Untap, flip our saga, attack ya down to eight. Forbidden Orchard, one, two, three. Yeah, you get a token. One, two, three, Necro Dominance. On our end step, I think we go all the way. We're gonna pay 21. Show us some soul spikes. There's one, we need two. Oh, there's two. All right, so Soul Spike, <laughs> Exile, Exile, and Soul Spike, Exile, and Exile. Turn three kill! Turn three kill! Necro Bird, pay all of our life! <laughs> exactly what it looked like to my head. That was exactly, it's always nice when that happens. A lot of times uh, you have a plan in your head and it doesn't actually really work out that way. This time, the plan in our head worked out perfectly. I mean, obviously, we only got to draw 21 cards, right? So there was some chance that we didn't hit two soul spikes, which is the number we need to win, but uh, <laughs> good enough. Good enough. It's gotta be like elementals, right? I would think, I would think elementals. Maybe we bring in the Roiling Vortexes to punish our opponent for evoking. That would be my guess as to what they're playing. Not gonna bring Curse Stone and pick your poison, Alpine Moon, Ley Lines. Could bring in the March, I guess. March is also very good with Necro. It just doesn't go face, so it's a little awkward in a burn deck. Let's go down like maybe a Rakdos Charm. Go down a Rakdos Charm. Go down a Rakdos Charm. Maybe one Shardless Agent and one Mechanicians. Actually, no, that gains us life. Let's go down one. Ah, oh, Bump is efficient, though. One Rakdos Charm. That's fine. Bring the Vortexes. Run it like that. Well, game one <laughs> was kind of the dream. <laughs> was kind of the Necro dream. 
Oh, can we keep this hand? We're on the draw. We only have one land. We would rather have two. We do have a Roiling Vortex. We have the Necro if we should get to it. One land, one keep. <laughs> As long as we get land number two, and then eventually three, sand's pretty sweet. Found a basis. Well, got these mechanicians. I guess, I guess that if we're not going to draw land, drawing black one drops is what we want at the moment. Oh, guy, but wrecking a raid. Found it. Is he rainforest passes and land? Ha ha! That is a land. All right, so we get to drain ya. Verdant catacombs and. We will just pass the turn. Should we just Roiling Vortex right now? Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait till our opponent cracks the fetch. We're gonna wait and just Bowmasters. All right, we will crack our fetch. We don't wanna get Tide Bindered somehow. Uh, grab a Blood Crypt untapped. Also worth mentioning, losing life is kind of painful in this deck because the more life we have, the more we can Electro Dominant. So keep that in mind. Like. Electro Dominance works especially well with Blackburn because a lot of our burn, even though it's not as efficient as red burn, a lot of it incidentally gains life, which is actually a huge upside with Necro in specific. Pwn it. Another surveil and pass us. Well, one and two. We will flash in a Bowmaster and ping ya and untap. Roiling Vortex. Well, we'll flip our Saga. Pwn's a too high of a life total for us to win with Necro this turn anyway, I think. I think we just... I think we just run out the Roiling Vortex. Yes, Roiling Vortex will hit us if we Soul Spike. Hopefully it doesn't matter because Soul Spike also gains us back life. What does our opponent have? Leyline Binding to get rid of the Vortex. Oh, Omnath here would be bad. Omnath gain a bunch of life would be really bad. Uh, opponent, the One Ring. Well, the One Ring is also bad. Also not great. Draws a card, triggers Bowmasters. Well, Roiling Vortex again, and opponent's going to cast a Solitude to get rid of the Bowmaster. Well, we will pass the turn, but our opponent has a one ring. Oh, we need to draw land. We need to draw land and try to do the Necro thing. That's how we could win this game. Pound at one ring down to 11. I'm just worried about Omnath gaining a bunch of life. We don't even have the mana for Vortex at the moment. Opponent. Obviously, they can't play too many Evoke Elementals. Or actually, really any, right? Five damage adds up. They don't know it, but we have Bolts in hand. Only one red source at the moment, though. We might not. We might need one more Blood Crypt in the deck, actually. Opponent. To Fury Time Raveler. That is actually pretty good against our end step plan. All right, to Fairy. Bounces the Orc and Beseju, and Prismatic Ending. We draw a Rakdos Charm that's not doing much. Well, go to combat, attack to fairy. Opponent, Solitude, Pitching Leyline Binding. Well, we will Gonti's Mechanicians, and Lightning Bolt. Do we just go face? Ugh, or do we have to get rid of the Teferi? So if we bolt our opponent, they go to eight, seven, six. The problem is the Teferi keeps us from doing the Necro thing, but I think we just go face, hit you to eight, drop you to six. Oh, there's the game. All right, there's the Omnath and the Fetchland. Yeah, that's that's going to do it. Well, unfortunately, this game just never drew enough mana to actually do anything. Brutally, brutally painful. Well, we can play the Nurturing Peatland. Lightning Bolt to Teferi. Pay a life to get an energy. Pass the turn. But this Omnath is just too much life gain. Our opponent's going to be at too high of a life total now. Oh, we even drew a bunch of Roiling Vortexes. Our opponent just had all the answers this game. Bone it. Zagoth Trio. One ring. Not really a drawback when you got a Omnath gaining infinite life. Draws up to 10. Maybe they'll mill themselves out, won't it? Another fetch land up to 14. And another one ring to get protection. Yeah, I think that just does it now. Opponent gets in with the Omnath. Because now our Necro doesn't even do anything. Play Roiling Vortex. Pass the turn. Yeah, I guess we got to be faster against this deck. It seems like... What is our opponent playing for Modern Horizons 3? Oh, I guess Planner Genesis is the the sort of new card. Omnath's just, a, just an issue. Pound it. Oh, all right. And a force. Yep. 
Good enough, good enough. Well, on to game number three. Yeah, it's unfortunate that our opponent has so much life gain. Not ideal at all. Rakdos Charm seeming pretty bad in this matchup. I know we can kind of power it up, but I think we'd rather have a pick your poison. Let's run it like that. Well, we're on the play, which might be good news. This matchup feels horrible, though. <laughs> If you could draw up the worst matchup for our deck, it's probably this one. Still not very confident in this matchup, but we have one drop into Roiling Vortex into Necrail. We'll see. We'll see if any of that matters. Pwn it. And Blasses. Ping ya. Bloodstained Mire. Crack Bloodstained Mire. Grab a Blood Crypt untapped. And Roiling Vortex. I mean, we can Necro next turn. I don't know if we can win off Necro next turn, though. Opponent goes to, we'd have to hit all four. That seems like a, a big ass opponent. Misty Rainforest, and pass it. Well, we dropped 18. Lightning Bolt. We get to flip our Saga. Well, play a Swamp. And I mean, we gotta go for it. Necro. Come on, opponent. Let us draw some cards. Oh, we're gonna get Leyline Binding. And Leyline Binding. I mean, we do have this Pick Your Poison. Opponent's down to 12. Opponent, Tap Land. In theory, the Pick Your Poison can get back our, our Necro. Forbidden Orchard. Play the Peat Land. Attack ya. Down to 10. And, I mean, we gotta go for it. Pick Your Poison. Each opponent sacks an enchantment. Come on, we need this Necro. Planner Genesis, okay. Gets a Surveil Land. Do they have a Force? Okay, we get the Necro. We go to our end step. We pay, we're going all the way, we're paying 15. 15 life, come on, show us some Soul Spikes. Show us some Soul Spikes. Actually, we do have the Roiling Vortex, we gotta keep that in mind. So maybe we can't quite go all the way, because we'd have to take damage off of those. If we pay nine, we Soul Spike, we take five. Nine, down to seven, we take five, down to two, gain four, up to six, take five. Okay, I think nine is the number. We'll pay nine, draw nine. Oh, we didn't hit any of them. Uh, okay, so, Lightning Bolt you. Discard, down to six, the one ring. I mean, the one ring is obviously bad for us, but I think we can play around it with the mechanicians. Opponent Sacred Foundry tapped and passes. So what we need to do, let's see if this actually works. So Roiling Vortex, we drop to six. We need to play Gonti's Mechanicians. Play Gonti's Mechanicians. Play a Bloodstain Mire. Crack a Bloodstained Mire. Get a Theater. Graveyard, the bump in the night. Wait, why didn't, oh no! Okay, this doesn't work the way I wanted. All right, we'll pass the turn. Oh, I was thinking, I forgot about the Roiling Vortex. I was thinking that what we could do is we could play the Gontis Mechanicians, crack the fetch land to get an energy, and then during our opponent's turn, nurturing peat land to get an energy, and then we would just win the game on our opponent's upkeep. Unfortunately, because of the Roiling Vortex, we had already taken our first damage of the turn, so we didn't get the energy from the Mechanicians. We gotta hope our opponent doesn't have a Lightning Bolt. I don't think they play Lightning Bolt because they're playing all the prismatic endings and leyline bindings and so forth, but a lightning bolt would actually let our opponent burn us out before we burn them out. <laughs> this is ended up being a very interesting match. Necro is kind of wild though. We saw the full power in game one, but even like this game, it's drawn us a lot of cards. <laughs> it's drawn us a lot of cards. If only we'd hit some, uh, some soul spikes. It is a little, a little bit awkward with the Roiling Vortex, I guess. That didn't minimize the number of cards we could draw. Maybe Vortex isn't worth it. Maybe we gotta find another. Ah, oh, but Vortex is also keeping us from dying to evoke elementals. <laughs> so I'm actually not sure now. It is a non-bow, it is a non-bow, right? Of trying to cast the, the free soul spikes with Roiling Vortex out. Is it a necessary evil? Is it a deal breaker? I mean, we didn't hit a soul spike anyway, so it didn't even matter, but I mean, this is the game. Opponent, one, two, three, Teferi. Well, we will add a black mana, make two energy, no bolts. So opponent, gonna block the mechanicians, passing, and scooping. Wow, we took down five color elemental pile with a, 
<laughs> with black necro bird <laughs> necro is back oh my goodness this card this card well at least in this deck it is sweet well let's just keep doing that hopefully we do not draw more lands that would be awkward no necro necro if we could resolve it, it would be sweet apparently it's not that easy to resolve a necro <laughs> It might, it might be Necro. I don't know. I go back and forth. Now that we got to play with Necro a bit, I go back and forth as to how good it is. I am really not sure. Well, Marsh Flats, crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Swamp and Sleeper Agent, go. Opponent, down to 15 here on turn number one. Garden of Frailies. Wow, down to 12. And a Nettle Sentinel. Okay, opponent, I'm gonna get in and hit us. <clears throat> well, it doesn't hurt that our opponent took three damage there, that's for sure. Uh, it does hurt that we drew a Chancellor. That is also for sure. Well, Gonti's Mechanicians, Marsh Flats, Crack Marsh Flats. Get an Energy, grab a Blood Crypt untapped, and bump ya down to nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. So we're a burn spell away again. Pony goes to seven. Yup, down to 11. Opponent, oh boy, we got the combo. Heritage Druid, untap Sentinel Sentinel. And Garden of Fraley is tapped. Burn, Bowmasters. Well, Bloodstain Mire. Crack Bloodstain Mire. Get an energy. Grab the Raccoon Theater. Surveil. Definitely don't want a Bloodstained Mire. We hit our opponent for three, so they go to four. This hits our opponent for one. I feel like there's a world where this Bowmasters wins us the game. Opponent goes to two. I feel like that world exists. Like our opponent, if they crack a fetch, play on, we have seen the MDFC has kind of hurt our opponent here a little bit. If they play an MDFC, if they go to play an elf, then I think we just Bowmaster, Snipe Heritage Druid, and trust that the Sleeper Agent gets the job done. This might be the Sleeper Agent win. <laughs> this is such a ridiculous deck. <laughs> it's such, it's just such a ridiculous deck. Oh, but elves is probably a bad matchup. Probably good that we got to go on the play. The reason we have to kill the Heritage Druid if they play an elf here is they could just combo off. Okay, just kidding. Well, or they, it actually does win us the game. Bowmasters? <laughs> well, that's why we waited. Ping your face. And opponent scoops it up. Well, that went pretty good. Sadly, I guess we get a single Cursed Totem. And we hope we draw it. Uh, single Cursed Totem and a March of Wretched Sorrow. The good news is... The good news is that a uh, Rakdos charm seems hilarious against elves. That seems like a good one. I don't know if we'll draw it, but Rakdos charm, elves go so wide that there's some world where we just like let our opponent combo off and make a huge board and then just Rakdos charm them. I really want a necro. I really, I really want a necro. I feel like we've had a hard time resolving necros. We've had what? Like we've really popped off with it once. We got bow mastered brutally once. We got it countered a million times in one match, which I guess is good. There should be counterplay to Necro. That was actually a pretty a pretty good Sleeper Agent. Just ran it out there and our opponent couldn't deal with it. And I mean, Sleeper Agent, if unchecked, does end up dealing a lot of damage. It deals a lot of damage to us too, but it does end up dealing a lot of damage. Oh, I really want this Rakdos Charm win. That would be the funniest. Oh, that's so many lands. You know what? We're keeping it. We're keeping it. We wanted the Rakdos Charm. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it. We're going to give it a go. Pwn it. Pendlehaven. Well, there's a Necro. Marsh Flats. Crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Swamp. Ant. Got these Mechanicians. Go. Untap down to 14. Okay. Priest of Titania. Also very scary. Opponent passes. We draw Soul Spike. Soul Spike is good. Uh, well, play a Bloodstained Mire. Crack the Bloodstained Mire. Get an energy. Get a, I think we have to get Blood Crypt untapped. Down to 18, pass the turn. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be very interesting. Opponent untaps. Lots and lots and lots of mana. There's a forest. And a Leaf Crown Visionary to pump the dorks. Azuri, Renegade Leader. So we basically need to win this turn. So we Rakdos Charm our opponent down to 10. So Rakdos Charm. Each creature deals the damage to its controller. Then we untap. We just have to hit one more Soul Spike. One more. So we will play a Bloodstained Mire. 
Crack the Bloodstained Mire, get an energy thin the deck. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, I hope we don't whiff. The Auntie's Mechanicians. Hit ya. Down to seven. Necrodominance. And pay 20 life. We just need to hit a Soul Spike. And there we go. There we go. Soul Spike. <laughs> Exile Sleep Reagent. Exile a Necrodominance. And then a uh, Soul Spike. Exile an Exile. And Soul Spike, Exile and Exile, just to show how much damage we could actually do here. <laughs> Woo! What a world! What a deck! Oh man, this deck's awesome. It is horrible, it is janky, but it is also awesome. Turn three, Mono Black Burn. We drew more than half of our deck and burn our opponent out. I don't know if this is the best burn deck in modern, but I think it's the fastest burn deck in modern now. I don't think normal burn, can it win on turn three? I'm not sure it can win on turn three. It is necro time. Sadly, this hand is not a necro hand. Uh, we're gonna keep this hand though. This hand's pretty good. We're playing some <laughs> mono black necro bird. Oh, the jank about it when it fails. Blackburn is such a unique archetype and I feel like necro is so perfect for it. Land more elves. Do we have to bolt the bird? I don't wanna bolt the bird. I wanna bolt the face. We're just gonna, we're just gonna let it go. Sleep agent. Sleep Rage should get in like six this game, hopefully. Opponent, Vernon Catacombs, cracks it. How about a shock opponent? We could use an untapped shock. Forest, forest. Priest of Titan. Oh, it's an elf deck and a nettle sentinel. Well, okay, Rakdos Charm. How about a Rakdos Charm? Just, just a little Rakdos Charm. All right, this might be a slight change of plans. Uh, Blood Crypt untapped. I think we do have to bolt the Priest of Titania, unfortunately. And then we'll play a Okaiba Reckoner Raid. Come on, Rakdos Charm. Rakdos Charm. Rakdos Charm. So we did have to spend three damage on a creature. The Soul Spike might be a problem unless we can hit a Necro. If we draw a Necro, anything can happen. But ooh, down to 10. Elvish Warmaster. Does that change anything? Priest of Titania. Oh boy. Oh, just a Rakdos Charm. Just a Rakdos Charm off the top. Just a Rakdos Charm off the top. That's all we ask. That's it. We're not picky. Just a Rakdos Charm. Even better than Necro, honestly, is the Rakdos Charm pwn. It hits us. Oh wait, do we just... Can we win? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we draw a black card? I guess a black card is lethal, I think. Oh, it's a land? Oh, land is not a black card. Okay, we need to nurturing peat land, spin it for a black card. Come on, deck, come on, deck. There's a bowmaster. Okay, so bump in the night you. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. They take damage from the sleeper agent and then soul spike. Oh, we are the elf assassins. We are the elf assassins. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, we don't change any. Well, we bring in the curse. We bring in the curse totem. We bring in the, the ley line. Uh, or March of the Wretched Souls, not the ley line. We'll go down. Sleeper Agent actually kind of good. You're going to have so many creatures anyways. Maybe we want like one Reckoner Raid and one... Yeah, we'll go one Sleeper Agent. Let's run it like that. Oh, come on, Rakdos Charm. Come on. Oh, this deck could give us such a good Rakdos Charm. All right, opponent's on the play, which is scary. Well, Rakdos or Necro Charm, those are the two cards we really want to see. Opponent's going to start at 14 because of these Chancellors, which are not actually good, but I do like the Bowmasters. The Bowmasters is very good against Elves, and we can still draw a Rakdos Charm opponent. Heritage Druid. Nurturing Peatland. Well, unfortunately, I think we have to play Forbidden Orchard here. We're going to be giving our opponent some tokens. There is a world where we need to bolt this Heritage Druid. We'd much rather Bowmasters it, but... Priest of Titania. I think we're seeing the cost of these MDFCs. I ain't sure we'll take it. I think we're still in kill our opponent mode. Yeah, you get a spirit. We will bolt your face. Marsh Flats. Well, Marsh Flats. Crack it to thin the deck. Get a Blood Crypt untapped. And bow. Oh no, oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, we're dead. Oh, we punted. Oh, the downside of Forbidden Orchard. So normally on Magic Online, if you tap a land, you just can undo it if you tap properly. So I just tapped really quickly because normally if you mess up, it just doesn't really matter. 
Forbidden Orchard, because it has a triggered ability, does not work that way. <laughs> With Forbidden Orchard, if you tap improperly, you are out of luck. And that is exactly what happened here. And that's why our opponent has this Priest of Titania. And now we need to draw Rakdos Charm or Necro this turn. Those are the two cards. I think the only two cards. Actually, Soul Spike. Rakdo so Necro, Rakdos Charm, Soul Spike. Any of those three cards should win us the game. It was 100% a moto pun, but it was a pun. Opponent, Finale of Devastation X1 to get a Wirewood Symbiote. So you bounce an elf to untap a creature once each turn so they can untap their Priest of Titania. They only have one card in hand. I don't. I mean, maybe this card just wins them the game. All right, Magic Gods. Show us something good to make up for that moto pun. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Sleeper Agent. Yeah, I think that punt gets us, because then they just win with a Zuri. So we can sack the Peatland. Curse Totem. Scoop him up. I think it would have mattered. I think if we kill that Wellwisher, none of that happens, and we win that game pretty easily. Oh, well, that's a good that's a good PSA, right? That if you're playing Forbidden Orchard in your deck, you got to be especially careful about tapping properly because there is no takesy backsies with Forbidden Orchard. Yeah, I think we would have won, right? Because we just sniped the Wellwisher and then our opponent can't really play a ton of stuff. All right, we got the Rakdos Charm, so we're going to keep this. This hand's actually kind of good. The Rakdos Charm is... I'm very excited about the Rakdos Charm. A little bit concerned that we have, like infinite lands but hopefully hopefully we can get around that all we really need is like black cards well let's start with the raccoon theater do a little surveilling bump in the night i think we actually keep bump in the night because we have this rakdos charm we might not need to deal that much damage to kill our opponent opponent land of war elves passes well we will play gonti's mechanicians blood crypt untapped get an energy and bump in the night. Not gonna kill the land of war. They have things that make way more mana that we need to keep an eye out for. Plus, with this Rakdos charm, we kind of want our opponent to play creatures. Elvish Visionary draws a card. Ooh, untap down to 14. Okay, Wirewood Symbiote. Passing. All right, non lands, black cards. Soul Spike. Well, Soul Spike is a black card. We'll play the Peat Land. I feel like we need one more black card. Or opponent, so we have three here. So opponent goes to 11. 10, 9, 8. All right, there's a Nettle Sentinel. No Heritage Druid yet. There's a Heritage Druid. Eladrami. Okay. I mean, if they have like a hoof in hand, then I guess they, I think they get us. I'm gonna untap the Heritage Druid for some reason. Untaps. 14. So we hit for six. They go to eight. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, I think we wait. I think we just wait. I, I mean, I think we're hoping that our opponent plays enough creatures that we win with this Rakdos charm in hilarious fashion. Leaf Crown Visionary. Okay. So we get an energy. Shoot you with Gonti's Mechanicians. We bolt you with Lightning Bolt. Rakdos charm is going to go to one. Opponent has seven creatures. We're one short of lethal. Actually, do we even need to cast it? I guess we kind of do. And then all we need is a black card to win. Yeah, I think that's safest. We're going to cast it. Hit you to one. Two mana, seven damage bird spell. This is like the dream Ragdose Charm matchup. And then we just need a black card and we get two draws at it. So as long as we don't like super... Okay, got these mechanism that works. Soul Spike. Exile, Exile. And that's a Rakdos Charm win. Rakdos Charm so perfect against elves. Oh my goodness, is that is that a hilarious matchup? Wow! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You gotta be kidding me! We got a Necro. We have some burn. We got a sleep agent. We got a soul spike. Uh, we'll see what our opponent's doing, but I do like the looks of this hand. I think we just bloodstain mire, crack it, swamp, Gonti's mechanicians, passes. Well, we'll grab, play a marsh flats. Pass the turn. Uh, do we want to crack it now? Eh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we'll just pass. See, see what our opponent does. The only reason to crack it now would be to get more energy. But Pluto Delta for Thundering Falls and Mills. 
a lightning bolt. Well, it's good to keep in mind. Opponent might be like a Murktide deck. They're probably gonna flash in the Bowmaster. Oh, they're a Tamio deck, okay. Steam Vents Dept. Crack the Marsh Flats, get an energy, grab a Swamp, and run out of Bowmaster's Pigna. And untap. Draw Peatland. Well, go to combat, do some attacking. Opponent. I'm gonna do a little blocking. Well, they could have a counter, but we're gonna go for it. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Make an energy. Necro. It's gonna be cool, opponent. Don't counter it. Oh, they have force. Okay. Well, that's annoying. Polluted Delta. Cracks it. Island. Um, well, hit our opponent's face. And opponent. So they're gonna try to flip the Tamio, I think. But they gotta do it on hard mode, right? Like, they have to crack the clue. They get in, they crack the clue. Oh, they're not even gonna do it. All right, so we get to untap. Verdant Catacombs. Well, we will go to combat, do some attacking. Down to 12. Play the Catacombs. The question is, do we wanna play this sleeper agent or do we hold it for soul spike purposes? I think what we do here is we crack the Vern Catacombs, get an energy. I think we get the Surveil Land. See what's on top. It's a soul spike. So we'll put it on top, then we'll play the sleeper agent. So this means if we do need to soul spike, we can crack the peat land to draw a black card to pitch to the soul spike. Oh, that Necro would have been so good. We would have drawn into the Soul Spike too. Opponent. Counter spell. All right, sure. Well, I guess we just do this now. Let's just sack the Peat Land. Yeah, let's just do it now. Sack the Peat Land. Draw a card. Soul Spikes at the ready. Opponent probably needs to deal with the Bowmasters before they go too deep with the Tamiyo opponent. Combat. Passes. Marsh Flats. Well, we will play the Marsh Flats. Tamiyo is like a reasonably effective blocker. Takes one, opponent cracks down to 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. I mean, that's assuming we resolve everything. We're like one burn spell away from winning potentially. Or a Necro. Necro with two soul spikes, we just draw the black cards and we win. The Bowmasters is keeping the Tamiyo from flipping. Wow, getting in with the Tamiyo, sure. That might mean, well, maybe they drew an answer to some of our stuff if they're attacking here. Opponent's gonna pass. Well, we will. Oh, it could be a flash creature. Tidebinder on the Marsh Flats. I mean, we're gonna crack it. Not like we need a bunch more, a bunch more land here anyway. Blood Crypt tapped. Untap. Forbidden Orchard. Well, play the Forbidden Orchard. Go to combat. Get in with the Bowmaster. Actually, I think we just get in with the Orc. If we get in with the Bowmaster and they flash in Tidebinder, it's kind of awkward. Down to eight. Wow, we are so incredibly close. Opponent, gonna bolt the bowm uh, Bowmaster, yup. And cracks a clue to draw a card. Untaps, gets a clue. Now well, they can flip the Tamiyo. Sacks a clue, sacks a, oh, preordains. Okay, so they're gonna flip the Tamiyo. Are we gonna manage to resolve a, a spell through this? Our opponent's got a lot of counters. We've seen counter spells and force negation. Opponent, finally flips the Tamiyo. Gonna take up the Tamiyo, play a tap land, play a bobble. I mean, we have lethal. I just am not sure we can resolve it. Opponent passes, gets to draw a card. Wow, we are flooding out to the extreme here. <laughs> this is, this is max flood mode. Get in, edge ya. Play Forbidden Orchard. I mean, we have flooded out so hard, we're gonna be able to start hard casting soul spikes. Opponent. Cracks the clue. Yeah, we have lethal. Can we resolve it against the control deck? That is the question. Plays even more Tamios. Plays the Mishra's Bobble. Takes up the Tamio. They gotta have a counter in hand. If they didn't have a counter in hand, I don't think they'd be just ticking up like this. Pwnit, passing. Pwnit gets to draw another card. Oh my god. All right, well, that is another Forbidden Orchard. So we will pass the turn. We're like a... 18 land deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Pretty sure we have like four lands left in our deck. Just saying. I mean, we are going to hard cast a soul spike here. So, Forbidden Orchard. I'm sure it's getting countered. Forbidden Orchard. 
Necro would be a sweet draw. We need to overload the counters, but yeah, this this deck is never supposed to be able to hard cast a Soul Spike. That is just not ever supposed to happen. Uh, Soul Spike, you counter Gonti's Mechanicians. Do they just have enough counters to beat us? We can't Rakdos Charm and Soul Spike. Play Gonti's Mechanicians. The problem is this only puts our opponent to one, so opponent doesn't care. And then I guess we just pass the turn. I mean, once they draw half their deck, there's no way, there's no way we're gonna be able to win. So opponent's gonna try to draw half their deck. Well, I mean, this is it. I'm sure they have another counter though. Rakdos Charm. Show us counter number 40. Yeah. All right. Well, opponent drew a lot of counters that game, unfortunately. <laughs> a lot, a lot of counters. I don't know if we changed really much of anything here. I guess we can bring in the pick your poison as an answer to Tamio and just run it like that. Yeah, that's pretty brutal that our opponent just managed to counter like everything we wanted to do. Oh, we were so close. Even through our opponent drawing every counter, we were still incredibly close to winning that game. We were like one point of damage away, but our opponent just had 79 counter, like oh, 79 counters, every counter in the world. I gotta say, I don't think Tamio is very good in modern. <laughs> that game did not make me think that Tamio was good, if that's what our opponent was going for. All right, we will keep. This hand does not have a Necro, sadly, but well, we'll reveal a Chancellor. Hit you for three. Down to 17. Bloodstained Mire. Crack Bloodstained Mire. Grab a Blood Crypt untapped. And Sleeper Agent, yeah. Opponent, down to 15. Spire Bluff Canal. And Dragon Rage Channeler. And a Mistress Bobble. Opponent's slinging those spells. So is this just, is it Murktide, but they like took out Ragavan for Tamiyo? Speaking of decks that seem weak to Bowmasters, our opponents is on that list. We draw even more lands. This has been the the league, uh, the match of flooding out. I swear. I s look at the number of lands in our deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's just not a lot of lands in our deck. I don't know how we always end up drawing all of them. Bump in the night, you. Lightning bolt, you. And pass the turn. Bone it. Down to seven. Well, we're kind of back to that same old spot where we need to draw like another another piece of damage. Forbidden Orchard, pass the turn. Are we gonna end up one point of damage short again? Like last game, through all the counters? Opponent's going to Lightning Bolt the Sleeper Agent. Well, all right. Soul Spike you. Down to three. All right, we need three points of damage. Can we do it before we die? Opponent. <laughs> Lightning bolts, our sleeper agent, untaps, steam vents tapped, passes, we draw, raccoon theater, even more lands, on top, soul spike, that's gotta go graveyard, pass the turn, wow, we were so close to winning this match, <laughs> we were so close, flooded strand, and goes to combat, attacks, cracks their flooded strand, gets a raccoon theater, Wow, high rolls into one of the few creatures in their deck to turn, ah, sweet Jesus. How is it possible? <laughs> I'm gonna have to pull out the calculator. I'm gonna have to pull out the calculator on this one. We must, we must calculate because this is a ridiculous number of lands being drawn yet again. Opponent goes to combat, gets in, hits us. The thing is they're just gonna be sitting on 49 counter spells again. Oh my God, oh my God. Two, wow. I guess we just got the, the bad seed. <laughs> we got the bad seed. Wizards is afraid of the power of Necro, so I think they're, they're nerfing our deck by making us only draw lands. <laughs> wizards, 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 wizards. Well, all right, bump in the night. Opponent, what are the odds you don't have a counter spell? I bet they're pretty low. Invert polarity. All right, opponent's playing literally every counter spell. They're playing the ones that even other people don't play. Wins a coin flip, of course, and that actually ends up being lethal. <laughs> wow. All right, we gotta pull up. We gotta pull up the calculator because that was two games in a row. I feel like that is like 
incredibly low odds. So if you think about this game, we had three fetch lands, right? So three fetch lands, that means we had 13 cards were actually drawn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that's just like last game, but worse. What are the odds? What are the odds that you only draw lands? What are the odds? 60 cards, 16, I guess I should check the number. I believe it's only 16 lands. Oh, it's 20 lands, 20 lands. 20 lands, sample size was uh, 13, and we drew seven, six. Oh, <sighs> yeah, not great. Well, okay. We got a necro. We're going to try it. Can we actually get a necro to stick? Let's see what our opponent's doing. Hopefully, not anything with thought seizes or counter spells. Oh, boy. Could be doing both. Polluted Delta cracks it. Blood Crypt, untap down to 17. Mishra's Bobble, and cracks it, takes a peek, and Nether Goyf. All right. Well, that was a lot of actions on turn one. Pass it. We draw a Soul Spike. Well, we will Bloodstain Mire, crack Bloodstain Mire, Blood Crypt, untapped, and Okaiba Reckonerade. Pass the turn. We don't really want to soul spike a nether goif if we can help it. That would be less than ideal. Opponent, polluted delta. Hits us for two. Okay, lightning bolts. Yeah, I still really don't want to spend a soul spike on that if we can help it. But it passes. Another reckon raid. Oh, play a peat land. I think we just pass in flashing bowmasters here. We can flash in bowmasters, ping our opponent. Chump with the the token. Is this another bolt? All right, bolts us again. And then if we get to untap the necro, we might be able to win because our opponent has hit us a bunch. Well, there's another goif. So we will one, two, drop to nine, flash on the bowmasters, ping ya, block with the army, stay at nine. Opponent plays marsh flats, passes. We draw. The question is, if we draw land, do we necro? We draw another bowmaster. All right. Well, another bowmaster is fine. Down to ten. Yeah, I think we just pass. I mean, we can double soul spike. It is very close to lethal. There might have been an argument to not blocking the goif. There might have been an argument to not blocking the goif and just trying to get a, a lethal attack there, because we have two soul spikes. So we have eight damage that our opponent does not know about. Opponent, Swamp, Ragavan. Well, we will just block the Ragavan. Hopefully we get in the one point of damage with this Bowmasters. Opponent, passing, we draw. We can also just, ooh, even more black cards. Well, that is also good. Well, get in with the Bowmasters. That should mean we have lethal, just by holding cards in hand, because now we can bump in the night. So now we can bump in the night our opponent, down to five, Soul Spike our opponent, Exile, Exile. And one more, one more. Soul Spike our opponent, Exile, Exile. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. We didn't get the Necro down, but we did get the win. So opponents just like Rakdos, Rakdos Necro, if I guess. We can bring in the March, maybe go on Rakdos Charm, run it like that. Come on, deck. Oh, I really want to get the Necro down, though. This is a sketchy Necro matchup. It's going to be very interesting to see how good Necro actually is in Modern. Its ceiling is win the game. On the other hand, it is very, very weak to Bowmasters. And our opponent, I am sure, is a Bowmasters deck. I mean, if you look at just the Modern meta, if you look at the Modern meta and just look at the most played cards, Bowmasters is number one. Like, Bowmasters, 32% of decks. So that means... One, oh, we got a mulligan this. That's way too many lands. That means one third of your games. One third. Oh, I guess we keep this, although this hand is kind of sketchy. Gonti's mechanism. Well, probably a Rakdos Charm, actually. Rakdos Charm to the bottom. Reveal the Chancellor. Hit ya. Now to 17. Sand only has one land. And it doesn't have a Necro. But all that to say, Necro's weak to Bowmasters, and Bowmasters is played in a lot of decks. It's not like it's weak to some card that you are hardly ever going to play against. It's weak to the most played creature in the format. So it's going to be interesting to see how that tension actually plays out. Opponent Blood Grip. Are they going to Thought Seize down to 12? 
Opponents just killing themselves here, all right? Ragavan. Well, that is annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have an answer to that at the moment. Bona passes. We draw a bolt that we can't cast. Well, we can play Agonti's Mechanicians. I mean, we could technically kill the Ragavan with the Soul Spike, but boy, that's a, it's a lot of cards. That's a lot of cards that are going to kill a one drop. I don't think we can afford to do that. So I guess we're taking some monkey hits and hoping for the best. Und At least it gives us an energy for our mechanicians. That's something. The problem is they can steal things that gain them life off of our deck. Opponent hits us. We get an energy. Opponent steals. Okay, well, a Rakdos Charm. Wait, Rakdos Charm? A Rakdos Charm that they can cast, sure. I imagine they're not gonna be casting the Rakdos Charm. And we didn't wanna draw the Rakdos Charm, so good monkey, I guess. Well, I think we actually Soul Spike. One, Exile and Exile. Hit you to eight. Opponent takes the bolt. I'm almost surprised they didn't take the mechanicians just because we can't cast the bolt currently. I guess they want the monkey to stay alive. Death's shadow. Ah, I see. Opponent's just going to try to kill us. We're going to need a little bit more damage. Necrodominance. Well, we will play Gonti's mechanicians, get an energy. And pass the turn. Necro is not the draw we wanted here. As much as we're a Necro deck and build around Necro, this is not the ideal time for Necro. Oh, come on, just don't see a life gain. We need two points of damage currently. We have six on board. Pone, Ragavan steals a Forbidden Orchard. We did kind of want that. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Come on, deck. How about a bump in the night? Bump in the night would be sweet. Blood Crypt untapped? No. Bump in the night? Bump in the night. How about a bump in the night? Ch Chancellor. All right, Chancellor is not a bump in the night or very good. I mean, I will say the downside of Blackbird is it does have some pretty bad top decks. <laughs> as much as you get some really hilarious wins and explosive draws, it also has games where you really want something you could cast and you draw Chancellors and you draw one land Necros and so forth. I guess the upside of drawing this Chancellor is it does mean we're live to drawing another Soul Spike. It felt like our opponent paused. It felt like they paused when they looked at our card. I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess they're stealing it with Ragavan anyway. Pona gets in. I bet it's Sleeper Agent. My vote is it's a Sleeper Agent on top. Let's see. Well, we get some energy. We get some energy. Opponent steals with Ragavan. Ooh, Bowmaster. Okay, sure. Well, I mean, it basically comes down to this top deck. We are dead next turn. We need to draw a way to deal two damage with one land. We untap. Deck. Marsh Flats. Um, well, okay, that does give us a redraw. Not a good redraw. But we can crack the peat land. And now we have to draw exactly Soul Spike. So we grab the Swamp. It would have been nice if we hit lands a little earlier. All right, crack it. Peat land. Well, there's all the lands we didn't draw earlier. So we are dead, right? We hit our opponent, but hitting our opponent grows the death shadow. So yeah. All right. All right. Not enough lands. On to game three. We're on the play. That hand was pretty questionable because we just never drew land number two. This deck has some inconsistent. Uh, this is a incredibly high variance deck. I feel like we've had a lot of flat out games. Then we get mana screw games. <laughs> then we have insane games with Necro. We will keep. This is a hand that would really love us to draw a Rakdos Charm. <laughs> that would be really, really cool. I don't know if we can run out the Sleeper Agent turn one. I think we, I think we just gotta play the Raccoon Theater. Uh, we'll keep the Lightning Bolt. Keep the Lightning Bolt past the turn. And a Swamp, and a Bobble, and cracks the Bobble to see the Bolt, and another Goyf. I mean, we can kill it. Should we kill it is the question. Now let's run out the sleeper agent. Play the forbidden orchard. I think we're trying to go face here. I don't know if it's going to work or not. It's going to be super close. Abonent down to 14. So we can hit him to 11 with a bull. Hopefully eventually soul spike opponent combat for five. Rakdos charm would be such a hilarious good draw here. Yeah, we'll see what our opponent does. There could be some world where we end up bolting the goyf. Like if they're missing a land drop, then it's probably worth just bolting the goyf. Blood Crypt and Scourge of the Skyclaves. All right, untap, see what we draw. Oh, another Chancellor. 
Well, that is another black card at least. This is gonna be insanely close. Opponent drops to 10. Hilariously, the sheep sleeper agent helps them grow their death shadows. Opponent goes to combat. Opponent gonna go attacking. They're gonna lightning bolt our face. So we drop to four for now, but we get to wait. Oh, do we get to win here? So two mana, opponent gets a spirit. Bowmasters. Ping the, ping the spirit. Gonti's mechanicians. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're one point of damage short. No, but we have the we have the sleeper agent. But what if they have fatal push? I mean, we got we got to try it. We got to try it. We can't play this afraid. Go to combat, attack you. Pass the turn. No fatal push. No fatal push. Sleeper agent triggers. Opponent to six. Oh, we got there. Lightning bolt you. I think we got there. Opponent down to three. And last but not least, Soul Spike. I'm, I got the fear of Veil of Summer, even though they shouldn't be able to have it, right? They're Rakdos. Soul Spike? <laughs> yes! Well, I mean, we went exactly 50% with uh, Necrobird. <laughs> Which I guess is pretty fine. We had some really good games, some really bad games. The nice thing about Blackburn in general and this new Necroburn deck in specific, because you got Necro to do some wild turn three kills, is the games are always interesting. It's always interesting. The cards are so weird. They're so janky. You never really know what's going to happen with the deck. So <laughs> I still wouldn't say the deck is good, but let's let's do a little wrap up. Let's do a little wrap up. So you've seen Blackburn before. We've played Blackburn before. Um, it's, it started as a budget magic deck, actually. And really, the one big new addition for Modern Horizons 3 is Necro Dominance. And Necro, it's absurd in the deck. We got multiple turn three kills with Necro because of the Soul Spike plan, which does work really well. The games where we're just like, you know, cast a burn spell or a raid reckon, whatever, like cast janky stuff the first couple turns, turn three Necro, draw like 20 or 25 cards, and just Soul Spike, Soul Spike, Soul Spike. They're so amazing. So I think that use, the synergy with Soul Spike and Necro is really, really strong. And that's one of the things people talked about with Necro, White right, was uh, like, is there a way that you can build your deck so you can draw a bunch of cards on your end step and kill your opponent with it or do something with it before you have to discard those cards down to your hand size of five and soul spike is a really good way of doing that so i really like how necro interacts with soul spike and what it does for the deck even outside of the soul spike kill which is definitely the flashiest thing it does in this deck is just the the yolo pay all your life except for one hope for the best plan even outside of that, it is a nice refill mechanism. Like there's games where we like cast some burn spells, Necro for like five to refill our hand. The next turn we cast some burn spells, refill for five and just close out the game. And it interacts really well with the weirdness of Black Burn, which is so much Black Burn. Gonti's Mechanicians, Okaiba Raid Reckoner, Souls Bike, Chancellor of the Draws, just incidentally is gaining you life. So it helps buffer your life total so you can afford to pay for Necro, uh, even as you're taking damage and playing game magic so i feel like necro oddly is like incredibly well suited for blackburn it is the perfect card for this deck on the other hand we did get to see the downside of necro we did have the game where we got hit by a bowmaster on the turn that we played necro and we pretty much just like lost to the to the bowmaster and remember once you have Necro down, you skip your draw step. So you don't get to draw cards naturally anymore. So if you're planning on Necroing and you don't have an answer in hand to Bowmaster, you essentially can, in theory at least, lock yourself out of drawing cards for the rest of the game. So it can also kind of be an auto loss in some scenarios. So we got to see that aspect of it as well. We also just got to see people have any answers for it. Like it's 2024 and enchantment isn't what it used to be. There's Besaju's and Leyline Bindings. So some decks could just straight up answered off the battlefield when we hit the battlefield when before it even gets to our end step so all in all i'm curious what y'all think about necro honestly i feel like it's incredibly powerful but as we've been talking about throughout our games i'm still not sure how it lines up in the meta is it like a busted card because of the busted things it can do and that we saw it do in our games is it not a busted card because bowmasters is so prevalent and it's like a good answer to necro really curious where we end up on this one i think that in this deck at least necro is amazing i think it's a huge addition to blackbird so in that deck it's really sweet overall 
I'm I'm really torn. I'm like 60-40. I'm going to say it's busted and there will be a broken Necro deck. Although, I do think Bowmasters is so good against it. Maybe it can keep it in check. But anyway, that is Necro Blackbird. That's better deck for today. Thanks for watching this early sneak peek at Modern Horizons 3, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.